What is up, heroes? This is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Virtue's Last Reward. Blind. I messed it up again. <laughs> Why can't I seem to get back in the groove of that? Uh, this is Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. Blind. In the last episode, we made our way out of the security room, which, which had its uh, pretty cool puzzles. But more importantly, I've been looking forward to getting out of here and seeing just what's waiting for us on the other end of this door. Is K going to be alive? Is Dio going to be alive? Are we going to find Temyoji, Quark, and uh, Clover? Are we ever going to find Quark, really? We haven't found him since he went disappearing, you know, forever ago. So, really, we have no idea if Vi and Sigma are the only people actually alive in the Nonary game at the moment, which would be pretty crazy. So, let's... let's find out. I just realized something. What's that? When we were looking at the security footage earlier, we were just looking for live feeds. We were trying to figure out where the others are. Oh, did it not cross your mind to look for old footage? What they were up to, if they were alive, and so on. But we totally forgot that security systems like this can do more than show you live footage. Are you following me? Yeah. You're talking about stuff that's been recorded, right? Footage of the past. If they store that, we might be able to see it. Yeah. I don't know how much luck we'll have, but it's worth a shot. Yeah, and I mean, as curious as I am to find out, you know, what what's going on with everybody else, it our finding out now versus 10 minutes from now versus 20 minutes from now is going to change that outcome, is it? So, we might as well while we're here. Definitely. Um, what do we do? Leave that to me. Uber Hacksaw, fine, it's at it again. You know how to use this thing? Well, it was designed so that a human could operate it. That means there's a logic to how it's set up. And Fi's like, and I know logic. A computer computes, a calculator calculates, and an automobile mobiles? Everything's designed to do something, and once you know what, you can start guessing how. Once you start to figure out how to get it to do things, it's just a question of playing with it until it does the things you want it to do. See? Monitoring video data. Looks like this is it. Can we see what the other folders say? Hmm... Doesn't seem like anything I can really make out. Good work. <laughs> Knock it off. Makes it sound like you're better than me or something. <laughs> As if you don't have experience with that, Fi. No data? What? Wait. What the heck is this? Everything says no data. Hmm. Let's check the log. Somebody must have gotten here first and deleted everything. Darn it. This isn't good. It looks like all the video data was removed before we got here. By zero? Maybe, but we also know that... Couldn't Golem have been used to do this as well? That would be my guess. All it says here is administrator. Darn. Well, that's a little frustrating. That footage could have told us a lot. Yeah. It might have given us what we need to figure out who the killer is. The camera in room 2 in the crew quarters would have recorded what happened to Alice and Luna. Same for the old woman in the warehouse. Yeah, I guess that would have been too easy. And if there was a recording of us being carried into the AB rooms. Ooh, that's a good point. Yeah, 
We could have even figured out who Zero Senior is. Hey, what's this? You want to open it? Yeah. It says Gollum status, or rather Gollum running data. I rem <laughs> That's so interesting. You can literally see the window open right there that says Gollum running data, but then they decide to translate it as Gollum status. That should be the system logs of those robots. I told you about them in the pantry, remember? Yeah, you mean the f Oops. You mean the room full of robots on the other side of the green door? Yeah. Here we go. Shoot. Everything here has been erased too. Looks like it. I guess there isn't anything we can... I'm trying to see... I don't think I see the one that we actually interacted with. Wait a second. What is it? There's a scroll bar. Try scrolling. Ooh, maybe there's like one or two that are going to be active. Yep, that's the one that we're looking for. I knew it. That golem we met is still functional. What do you mean? I thought you told me Golem or whatever his name was started spitting smoke and keeled over. Yeah. But he said that his... what passes for a Golem's brain, I guess, was in the main computer. Only his body was disabled. His brain is probably still functioning. Can we see his logs? Already on it. Ooh, this is exciting. Yes. Here you are. Then, hmm. Try the one that says cash. Hmm. These file names all just seem like random characters. Whatever. Just pick one and open it, I guess. Sure. This is... Oh, so this is Golem's observation of us, right? This is K attacking us and throwing us through the door. This is... Yeah, that's what I thought. This is probably from right after K decked us. We'll be tossed into that white door on the left in a minute. Just watch. Is it a video? See? Well, so... Oh my goodness, is there going to be some major plot twist where we don't actually get taken into the door? And this is instead, maybe... Well, no, this is warehouse, this is floor B, right? I was going to say, maybe he's going to drag us into the AV rooms or something. Interesting. What's also interesting is it's not a video feed, it's a series of pictures, right? This is footage that Golem pulled from the main server. The other question is, why? And why is it not deleted, right? Why does Zero not want us to see so much of the other data, but is allowing us to see this data? Why did Golem follow us? The original data was deleted, but it looks like the stuff he pulled is still here. So Zero, this is maybe an oversight on Zero's end. Exactly. So if we go back through these files... Yeah. We might be able to figure out who the killer is. Maybe even who Zero Senior is. Well, I'd better hurry. Nice! Better hurry before Zero Senior, who's probably observing you right now, realizes that this data exists. Great work, Sigma. Come on, I told you I don't need you doing that. Besides, it's not like I really did anything. We started going through the rest of the files. The security footage showed K and Dio clearly passing through the white door on the far right. Okay, nice. So we, we know that they made it through and are likely alive somewhere. Good. Looks like they're both fine. That just leaves Temyoji, Clover, and Quark. I opened my mouth to continue, and then it happened. My vision suddenly blurred, and shaking my head did nothing to clear it. I staggered, my balance gone. What? Hey, are you alright? What's going on? What? Why is she talking like that? You really don't look so good, your skin's pale. Maybe you should sit down for a minute. She sounds like someone's playing a tape of her voice all sped up. What is going on here? 
I can't understand what she's saying. Come on, say something. Are you there? You look... Wow, your eyes look kind of blank. Then why is she moving so fast? It's like watching a video on Fast Forward. What the heck is... Wait. Could it be me? Maybe my brain is slowing down somehow. So it just looks like everything is speeding up. Hey, Sigma, what the heck is up with you? Look... Look, there's a sofa over there. Why don't you lie down for a bit? I still couldn't make out what she was saying, so I just nodded weakly. My eyes drifted shut as I tried to sort out what was happening to me. What is happening to Sigma? It, there isn't any sort of indication that, like, some sort of drug was administered or anything without their knowledge. That's so odd. Is there some remote ability to activate this sort of phenomenon in Sigma? I woke up several minutes later. When I opened my eyes, the first thing I saw was the ceiling of the security office. I sat up slowly, rubbing tenderly at my head. Phi, who had been sitting in front of one of the monitors, stood up and walked over as soon as she heard me move. You okay? Her voice sounded normal again. And she wasn't moving strangely either. Whatever had been happening seemed to have stopped. I let out a quiet sigh of relief. Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. You sure? Yeah. That's good. You really looked like you lost it for a minute there. You know... I'm trying to think... Is Sigma a robot, right? Is Sigma a golem? We don't really know. It was hinted at in that other timeline with the white blood and Luna mentioning the robots. And obviously now we know we've met Golem. And if Sigma were a Golem, well, then Zero would have some sort of remote capability uh, to, you know, alter Sigma in some manner. So maybe that's what was happening there. But I don't, still don't know why, right? If we don't really know why that would be done, why that makes sense, it's difficult to confirm that that's what happened. Well, I seem to have found it again. This is the security office. Maybe they've got a lost and found? Your sanity is pretty easy to miss. I'm surprised anyone found it, let alone turned it in. <laughs> well, looks like I don't have anything to worry about. Oh, something I thought about after last episode is we never really talked about she knows everything. Did we? Who is she? Is it the old woman that died? Is it Fi? Is it Luna? Is it Alice? Clover? Right? Somebody we haven't met yet? Is it Kay? We don't know Kay's gender yet. So who could that she be referring to? Supposedly they know everything, right? So we don't really know. Yeah. I think I must just be getting tired. Kind of surprised it didn't catch up to me sooner. I hope that's all it is. You haven't caught a disease or something, have you? Oh my goodness, that's a very real possibility as well. For just a moment I thought of Radical Six, but I didn't want to worry Fi if I didn't have to. Better to stay quiet about it. Well, you're looking a lot better, so I can stop worrying, right? What are you, my mom? Fine. No more check-ins. Anyway, I figured something out while you were resting. Yeah, that was going to be my next question is, did you find anything? Come have a look at this. Ooh, I'm excited to see what she found. What is it? Is this... Is this crew quarters room two? Footage from room two in the crew quarters, the room where we found Alice and Luna. I dug it out of Golem's cache. When was this recorded? You'll see in a minute. Up there on the right, that looks like some sort of time code. Can you figure it out? No. It's just a bunch of numbers. I can't make heads or tails of it. Yeah. The central server seems to be using its own time system. Files appear to be named based on that system. They might as well be random to you and me, which made it pretty hard to find this gem. Huh? 
Is that K? Yeah, that is K. The question is, what's he doing there and why? Oh, it's K. Yeah. He said that he got there and found Luna dead, essentially, and performed CPR for 20 minutes, correct? He looks at his bracelet here, probably checking how much time is left. I'll just pause that and magnify it. 21 minutes. So this is one minute before we saw them in the warehouse. So that means this footage is from 21 minutes before the primary doors opened, right? Also, gotta love the, the classic sort of, I don't know, CSI. We're just gonna zoom in and enhance the image, which is not really, not really a thing you can do. But, exactly. And that would have been the white doors in this case, right? Yes. After Kay leaves this room, it's about two minutes before he comes back with you and me. There were 20 minutes on the clock when we met up with him, right? So that means what we're seeing here is Kay one minute before he saw us. Right. That means this is right after he tried to resuscitate Luna. Yeah, if you believe him. The footage here doesn't show any of that. Are there any other angles? I looked around, but I couldn't find one. Yeah, I'm wondering where are the bodies, right? The only stuff left is shot from this position. Even so, I think we've gotten our hands on something important. You mean that this is a record of what happened right around the time of Luna's death, right? Exactly. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh man. Oh man, the way she asked that, it was like, are you are you mentally, emotionally prepared for this? Okay. Let's keep going. I'll move back to the start of this file so we can see it in chronological order. Let's say this is zero hours, zero minutes. After all, it's not like we know what time it actually is. Oh man, I'm so ready for this. Right. So this is the start of our footage. There's no one here. Yeah. About a minute goes by before anyone shows up. Wait. How do you know it's been a minute? This. Oh, that's the hourglass we used earlier. Yeah. If I play it back at normal speed, I can measure time using this hourglass. Oh, so it's not just a series of still images. It is video footage. They're, they're just not showing the video aspect of it. Okay, so she is actually able to measure that. Then I just add the time from the hourglass, and that's how far in we are. I'd recommend using the yellow one, but... Huh. Oh, someone's coming in. Luna, is that Clover behind her? Yeah. This is zero hours, one minute. And naturally, I mean, we, we had talked about it a couple episodes ago that Clover is probably falsely deducing that Luna killed the old woman and consequently Alice. I can't even believe I forgot that Dio confessed in that other timeline. But... Right now, you and I are talking to Dio in the Floor B warehouse. With the time frame we've established, calculating what we're doing is pretty easy. What's going on? Are they fighting? Hmm, no, it's not really a fight. It looks like Clover's just going off on Luna. Luna's just staying silent and listening to her. Yeah. Can we hear them? Is there an audio track? Want to listen to it? What the heck is this? Don't know. The audio data must have been transcoded into something else. Well, we won't be able to understand anything in that. Seen enough? I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Huh? 
Clover's interrogation goes on for a while, but it's all pretty much the same thing. Now, at 0 hours 10 minutes, things suddenly change. Here. Hey! They're gone! As I watched, Clover moved steadily closer to Luna, who backed away almost as if she were frightened. Clover continued her advance until she disappeared below the bottom edge of the screen. Is there another... Ah, no, you said this was it. Yeah. This is the only one that I found. It shouldn't be too hard to guess what happened after you've seen the next part, though. Yeah, we're gonna see Clover exit, I'm sure. Yeah. Clover left. She looked like she was kind of panicking. Yeah. This is about a minute and 40 seconds after they both left the frame. So 0 hours, 11 minutes, and 40 seconds. Only Clover left. Luna's still in the room. That means... Hold on. Wait until you've seen the whole thing before you start deducing. Okay, okay, I'll wait, fine. At 0 hours 12 minutes, another person comes in, just missing her. Dio? What? Dio comes in? Come on, Dio. He's disappeared too. Down below the bottom of the frame. What's he up to? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that whatever it was, he doesn't want us to know about it. Why? Remember what he said when you asked him about Quark? How the heck would I know? I've been here. Yeah. You're saying he was lying. He wasn't in the Floor B warehouse the whole time. He went to the crew quarters after we left him. Yeah. So what would have been important enough for him to lie about it? We should consider that it might have been something bad. And whatever it was, it happened during this time. So... Couple things to consider, right? Presumably, Clover killed Luna. That's probably my takeaway from that from the situation so far. But importantly, Dio visiting... Yes, it's true that Clover could have not killed Luna and they could have just gotten a fight or whatever, and then Dio comes in and finishes the job. But I think that's particularly relevant because Dio is probably the person who took the weapon from Alice. Yeah, I think so. Alright, now he's left. Does he have something in his hand? And it looks like he left in a hurry. Maybe he heard a noise. Like what? The cyan door opening? Now, 10 seconds after Dio leaves, a fourth person shows up. That brings us to 0 hours, 13 minutes, and 10 seconds. Wow, this is all so tight. It's K. Ah. When he heard K open the cyan door, he panicked. Whatever he was up to, he didn't want K to catch him at it. And then K disappears too. Yeah, below the bottom of the frame, just like the others. If K was telling the truth, this is where he begins to try and resuscitate Luna. It's also worth noting that when we were talking to Dio before, I had said he may already know that Luna's not coming, right? And that's why he's not asking about her. Or it could be due to him just not caring about anybody else, right? Um, but he seemed to be acting in a way that led me to believe that he already knew Luna was dead without us even telling him, right? And this confirms that he would have known had she been dead when he showed up, right? Anyway, nothing happens for the next 16 minutes. It's just this. So I'll fast forward, alright? Sure. 
Alright, should be around here. One second. Okay, you should see something you recognize in a minute here. There's Kay coming in from the bottom of the frame. He's checking the time on his bracelet. Hmm. So we've come full circle, huh? So it seems Kay was telling the truth. He was actually doing, well, he was doing something in that room for almost 20 minutes. And then he came over to us. But it's likely... Yeah, I mean, I, I still agree with what I said earlier. Yeah. We're back to 21 minutes before the primary doors open. For our arbitrary time code, that's 0 hours and 29 minutes. One minute later, at 0 hours 30 minutes, K heads to the Floor A warehouse. Once he gets there, he'll tell us about Luna's death. Wow. That's all the footage I wanted to show you. I've looked at it carefully. And I think it has something to tell us. You mean who killed Luna, right? Well, I can't say for sure. This footage makes for pretty shaky evidence. But it does suggest a very likely culprit. Who do you think it is? I ran over the footage in my head. Zero hours, one minute, Clover and Luna enter the room. For nine minutes, Clover aggressively questions Luna. Zero hours, ten minutes, they both move out of frame. Zero hours, eleven minutes, forty seconds, Clover exits the room. Zero hours, twelve minutes, Dio enters the room. Dio also immediately ex exits the frame. It seems likely that Dio was up to no good during this period. Zero hours, thirteen minutes, Dio exits the room. Zero hours, thirteen minutes, ten seconds, K enters the room. K also disappears from the camera's field of view. At this point, there are sixteen minutes where nothing happens. Zero hours, twenty-nine minutes, K enters the frame. He looks at his bracelet. It says 0021, the remaining time until the primary door is open. There seems to be only one conclusion. The person who killed Luna is... Oh, this is big. This is big. I... I'm going to be so curious. Yeah, I'm going to be so curious to see what happens in the timeline if there are three different options, if I choose incorrectly or not. I mean, the game is leading me very heavily to say Clover. I can't really see any more plausible means. So I think the logical step is to first assume it's Clover and then try other options. But, oh man. Oh man. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with, um, we'll go with Clover. Clover. What makes you think so? Luna could still have been alive after Clover left the room. Dio and K both went in the room after Clover. Either of them could have killed Luna too. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that it's nothing is set in stone, but that's just what seems most likely. That footage alone isn't enough to tell us who the killer is. But if we take one other thing into account, then the case against Clover gets a lot stronger. And what is that element? Dio's behavior at the White Doors. Kay wanted us to enter the White Doors. I told him I wouldn't leave three people to die. Do you remember what Dio said? Use your head for once! You're going to get us killed. He obviously knew that only you and I would be going through the door. Do you get it? Yeah, he knew we had Luna's bracelet. Which means he also knew Luna was dead. Ah, uh, that does seal the deal. Is that what you're getting at? 
Exactly. If he didn't know she was dead, he would never have said that. The moment Kay suggested we go through the doors, he would have brought it up. That's impossible. How are they supposed to get through without Luna? But he didn't even mention her. Like he didn't expect her to be there. I'm actually pretty happy. We, we had actually already noticed that his uh, avoidance of talking about Luna was pretty sketch and had implications. Why would he do that? I can only think of two reasons. One, that when Dio entered that room, Luna was already dead. Or two, he killed Luna himself. The second one doesn't seem likely, though. If Dio had killed Luna, he probably would have made a point to hide that. I'm guessing he probably would have asked where she was. Where's Luna? Sigma and Phi won't be able to get through the white doors without her. He seems like the kind of guy who'd go out of his way to feign ignorance of a crime he committed. In this case, though, he said nothing. That doesn't clear him, of course, but it does make it a lot less likely that he was the killer. If he wasn't the killer, then we're left with only one other option. When Dio entered the room, Luna was already dead. Yeah, that's how I see it. Interesting. That's pretty much what I thought, too. And it does seem like Clover had a motive. You mean what Alice noticed? Yes. The movement of the AB rooms convinced Alice that Luna had killed the old woman. Once Clover realized that, she probably started to think that Luna had killed Alice to keep her from telling anyone else the truth. She probably led Luna to the crew quarters to confront her. Maybe she hoped seeing Alice's corpse would cause Luna to confess. Maybe she knew something we don't. But Clover didn't get what she wanted. Luna didn't confess. Then, during her interrogation, something happened. It's hard to say what. Luna might have said something that set Clover off. Or maybe she admitted to a crime she didn't commit just to get Clover to stop. Whatever it was, something happened that drove Clover to murder. When did Clover get the injection gun? I would guess after she went through the yellow door. She would have been exploring the infirmary with Alice and Kay. That seems the most likely place to find it. Anyway, this is all just a theory, right? But because it's the most plausible at the moment, we should probably act with it in mind. We don't have any proof, so keep it quiet, okay? Interesting. Yeah, see what other people, what other evidence is provided to us um, without letting on that we have so much evidence thus far, right? Which could potentially put all of these people on guard. We also don't know that Clover is even alive at this point, right? If she didn't get through a white door, presumably she was penalized and killed. However, we've also been working under the worst case assumption that that penalty would be death. For all we know, it could be losing one point, right? Yeah, I know. Oh, there was one last thing. Was there any other footage that showed anything? No. Nothing to tell us where Clover, Temyoji, and Quark went. And nothing about the old woman or Alice's murders either. So Zero Senior's identity... Still unknown. Okay. Well, let's go find Clover. I guess we're not going to know the truth unless we get it straight from the straight from the horse's mouth. 
We still haven't figured out how Alice died, right? Again, it was presumably suicide in one of the other timelines. But we don't know if that's going to be the case here. I wonder if Clover's even alive. She is. She has to be. I sure hope so. Yeah, I mean, me too. Wow, and so the timeline continues. This is such a long timeline. It's a really good one, though, and I like it quite a bit. Clover channeling her murderous instincts yet again. Now we have another AB game coming up too, right? Quark already has nine points, right? We haven't seen Temyoji in forever. We haven't seen Quark in forever. Luna, Alice, both dead. It's not looking very good for our heroes. So now we're in warehouse A again. Is anybody else here? No one's here. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, let's start looking. We'll go through the crew quarters and work our way toward the elevator. Got it? Yeah. Oh, so now we're gonna go inspect the crime scene again. Or see if we can find everyone else, presumably. Is that what we're doing? Trying to find where everyone else is? Who are we going to run into first? Is anything going to be different about the crime scene? I don't, I don't know. You search rooms 1 and 2. I'll take 3 and 4. Got it. It's also worth noting we haven't found the bombs in any of these rooms, right? Not in this timeline. So I'm wondering if they're placed at all. And if not, What's different about this timeline that prevents them from being placed, right? I don't know. But either way, we head into room one. What are we gonna find in here? I think, is this where it was? The bomb? Oh, I guess there was nothing really. So now we head into room number two and... There's Alice's body. Alice. Luna. The most horrible thing about death is how it turns a person into a thing. It's a thing that looks like your friend, but it's not them anymore. Just this strange, cold shell, and every time you look at it, you feel a little of that coldness creeping in around the edges of your soul. Wow, that's pretty dark. Seeing death puts a heavy ball of lead in your stomach that just sits there, poisoning you. I turned and left the room. No good. There's no one in three or four. What about yours? Same. Nobody in them. Except, except Alice and Luna. Sad. The lead ball pressed against the inside of my abdomen. I leaned back against the wall and let out a long, weary sigh. What's wrong? You need to get it together. What are we doing right now? Looking for the others. Right. I know how you feel, but sitting around being miserable isn't going to help anybody. Let's go. Yeah. You're right. Phi turned and headed for the door at the far end. I heaved myself up off the wall and followed. Yeah, I'm really curious. What, what's going on with the other people? Are they dead? Are they dead? We're going to the infirmary now, I guess. It's awfully quiet. What? What? 
Clover and Tenyoji are both handcuffed around the sink and presumably both died because they didn't go through the white door. Oh my goodness, guys. What? The first thing I felt was that strange cold sweat of terror. My stomach clenched in protest, pushing a wave of bile and nausea up into my throat. The lead ball turned to ice, and my legs began to tremble under its weight before they finally gave way and collapsed. They were dead. I could feel it the moment I looked at them, but I didn't want to believe it. Now, despite the shock of this, I do want to take a brief second to think, right? When could this have taken place? If we know that Clover left Luna's presumably dead body after about 10 minutes of being in crew quarters two, that would be roughly the 40 minutes before the white doors open, right? And so that gives 20 minutes in which she and Tenmyoji had to have been found and handcuffed in this area. Sometime between 40 minutes before the white doors open and 20 minutes before the white doors open, right? Obviously wasn't us. The only real, I guess, potential culprits are D.O.K. and Quark. D.O.K. and Quark. It could have been K. It very well could have been K. But K shows up, what, mere minutes after Clover leaves? Because Dio shows up like a minute after Clover leaves, and then K shows up seconds afterwards. So unless... I mean, the infirmary is close to the crew quarters, right? So, theoretically... Both Clover and Tenmyoji had to be in the infirmary, and... I guess that really only leaves Dio, doesn't it? Because there's no way K could have handcuffed both of them to each other around this sink within a minute and a half while waiting in the infirmary and then shown up, right? I don't think so. I don't think that would have taken place in a minute and a half. Albeit, K is one of the few people powerful enough to reliably take out two people and do something like this to them, right? Dio would have a much harder time handcuffing Temyoji and Clover than, um, than K would. But at the same time, K is then, you know, doing CPR until we see him later. And so that really only leaves like a minute and a half, two minute window where K could have done this. On the other hand, Dio is unaccounted for during that entire time that K is doing CPR. And so that makes Dio the most likely culprit, doesn't it? I don't remember exactly when we left Dio, right? Because Dio had been waiting a long time and he was unaccounted for during that time period. So he could have done that. There's also, we can't forget about Quark, who we haven't found yet, but Wow, this just got really complicated. They couldn't be dead. Perhaps, perhaps they were just sleeping. The cool, limp feel of their skin under my shaking fingers dashed any hope I'd had left. I wrapped a trembling hand around the end of the bed and hauled myself up onto it. Even when I closed my eyes, I could still see them. My heart hammered away at my ribs, and my chest felt so tight I could barely breathe. I forced myself to take long, deep breaths. It's also worth noting, I guess, Quark must have died, right? Um, Quark, wherever he is, we don't know where, he could not have had, he would have to have both of their bracelets on him in order to go through the chromatic door. And so unless Quark killed them, no, he, actually he couldn't have done that because they only died once they didn't get through, those two only died once they didn't get through the white door, at which point Quark would also die so that he would have no way of getting both their bracelets to go through the white door without them prior to the white door closing, right? So, Quark must also be dead. So it is literally just K, Dio, Phi, and Sigma alive at this point. And it's looking like Dio, well we know Dio is a murderer of at least the old woman, but 
presumably, or very possibly, Clover and Temyoji as well. Finally, I opened my eyes. They were in a blind spot. What? The security camera. Remember how we didn't see anything in the real-time feed in the security room? Yeah. I guess the partition was in the way. Yeah. Dang. I wonder if that was by chance or intentional. They're handcuffed together. Yeah. Whoever did this really didn't want them going anywhere. The chain's been looped around the pipe below the sink. They would have been trapped here when the doors closed. Why? Look. See the red marks on their wrists? They were trying to get the handcuffs off. So you're saying it wasn't one of them that did this? Probably not. There's a cut on Temyoji's left hand. It was totally Dio. That's totally from the sword. Sword, knife, whatever. It looks like it's probably from a knife or something similar. Must have been deep when he presumably tried to fight back against whoever attacked him with it. So it was probably Dio. Then the blood on his clothes probably came from that wound. I don't see any others, at least. If this was the only one, it doesn't look fatal. I don't think he died from this cut. The penalty. When the primary doors closed, they couldn't get to them. The needles in their bracelets activated, and... Yeah. You can see the marks on their wrist from where they were injected. The tubocurarine must have killed them. Do you think that's why they were handcuffed to the sink? Hmm. They wouldn't have been able to get through the white doors without Quark. If someone wanted to use the penalty to kill them, they didn't need to tie them up. Yeah, you've got a point. Hmm? What's wrong? I take back what I just said. Yeah, it's possible that they could have already found Quark and known and had Quark's bracelet, right? You find something? Yeah. Oh. Phi bent down to pick something up and handed it to me. A cyan bracelet. Yep, there we go. This was Quark's. Correct. It has 9 BP too. There's no mistake. So, Tenyoji and or Clover it must have found Quark at some point. Right? And thus gotten his bracelet. Whoever found Tenyoji and Clover and wanted to kill them either found out when encountering them that they had such bracelet, because presumably Temyoji or Clover told them, um, or whoever found Temyoji and Clover had already known Quark was dead and potentially saw that his bracelet was missing and knew that Temyoji and Clover had it. Wow. What is Quark's bracelet doing here? Wait, no. Hold on. If Quark's bracelet is here, then that means... Yeah, and it also confirms that Quark died before the white doors closed. No. No. This can't be happening. Not Quark. Hey, Sigma! Calm down! Just because his bracelet's off doesn't mean Quark's dead. Okay, probably. Probably. But I guess it's technically not a guarantee. But... In fact, this could be good news. A ray of hope. Ray of hope? Yeah. 
If Quark still had his bracelet on, then he would have ended up like Temyoji and Clover. But he's not wearing it. That means he might have managed to avoid getting injected with Chubo Kyori. Yeah, that's a good point, Five. You mean the bracelet came off before the doors closed? Yeah. That's impossible. Zero Junior told us that they only come off when your heart stops. Or when you escape. Maybe he got out then. Right, he's got 9 BP. Wait, so you're saying he escaped, then came back, and left his bracelet here? No, that's impossible too. Zero Junior said the number 9 door only opens once. Even if he was able to get outside, he couldn't come back in. Why do you have to be so pessimistic? Have you actually seen Quark dead, huh? You need to think positive, Sigma. I think, yeah, I mean, it's possible his arm was cut off. It's also possible he was put into a brief coma or was uh, or like a medical coma or not even a coma, really. You're, you'd still have an active heartbeat, but his heart could have been stopped temporarily to get the bracelet off and then been revived. Reality is what we believe it to be. <laughs> really? So you're saying this is what we wanted to happen? That's enough. Quark is definitely alive. He has to be. He has to be. I refuse to believe he isn't. I can't let an innocent kid like that get killed. Interesting that she's so motivated now. I wanted to ask if she meant Clover and Temyoji weren't innocent, and I deserved to die, but swallowed my words. Fighting wasn't going to help us. All I could do was hope that Phi was right. Perhaps Quark was still alive. The question is where? What are you doing? Whew, what does Phi intend to do next? Right? Is she going to try and find Quark now? Is that the next step? We have an AB game that could be started at any point. We still don't- we haven't encountered K and Dio. We need to find them and, well, see if they have the AB cards. And how do we interact with them knowing that one of them did this to Tamioji and Clover, potentially, right? It is possible Quark did it too, but I don't think it's super likely. I think the next step is to, well, try to find K, try to find Dio, and try to find Quark's body. We still haven't, we know zero about what happened to Quark in this timeline, right? He disappeared and, and that's it. But, I don't know. We're going to continue to investigate that in the next episode. This was a long episode, but boy, was it packed with a ton of really, really valuable information. And it was a really exciting one. It might have been one of my favorite episodes thus far, actually. So I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.